So Dana 44 front hub dis disassembly. It's pretty simple. Um, first you start with taking these on this, it's six screws. They're fairly deep. They go through the whole deal. Um, this part just pulls right out. You can see there's a little rubber seal on there. Mine was bad on at least the passenger side. Um, then there's a couple different snap rings. One of them is this style that you'll have to use a snap ring plier to get to. Um, the second one holds the inner hub in and it's just a C style. So the best tool I could find to get them out with are picks like that. Um, you get it, get that pick just under the end of those rings and sort of behind it and as you start pushing it'll start peeling forward out of that crevice that it's in and you can pretty much just run that pick straight around and at some point you'll be able to grab that ring and just kind of pull it out. Um, aside from that the hubs are fairly simple. Uh, it's just a little locking mechanism. This inner gear here engages the hub on those splines and yeah that's pretty much it for the outer hubs for the locking portion of the hubs at least so for the second portion I'm gonna do something I don't usually do I'm gonna do this portion of the work on this side of the hub on film All right, the first thing you'll need is a hub wrench like this for the 44. It's a four spline, and there's specific measurements, etc., that you need, but I believe this one works for most all Dana 44 applications. There's two different hub nuts in here. Mine weren't torqued really all that tight, but I use a breaker bar because I can control it a little bit better than a ratchet. So there's the outer one. Um, the second thing that's in there is a locking style ring and I think you're supposed to have a separate wrench for this, I'm not sure. On the far side I just kind of, huh, okay, never mind, it just pulls out. <laughs> the holes that are on this line up with a, uh, a dowel that's on the inner locking ring. I don't know if you can see it. See there's holes on that? There's a dowel on the inner locking ring which also uses the same style socket. Oh and that was loose. That didn't even require a break. That makes me a little nervous. I know on the other side when I was taking it apart I did find um, red grease and it wasn't the good kind of red grease it was the nice brown rust red kind of grease so I know I was pulling water through either the spindle seal on the inside of this hub or I was pulling it through the hub itself which I know the hub had some rust in it so either one's possible. Uh, from here, that's that's pretty much the whole the whole uh, brake drum and hub, and that's the inner seal I was telling you about. I might have been pulling water there, one or the other. I don't know. Now I'm doing all this with the intent of getting with the intent of getting the axle pulled out so I can pull the differential out. Um, that being said, you don't have to do all this in order to get the axle pulled. Really, you only have to do your ball joints. 
If you do your top, your upper, and your lower ball joint nuts, and then press the knuckle off. If you're just doing differential work, that's all you need to do. Um, you can pull it out after you press those down some. You can pull it out far enough to pull the carrier out and replace the stuff you want in there. But I'm in here doing this. I really didn't want to skip checking my bearings, repacking if I need to. The grease on this side actually looks really good. Um, it looks like somebody's been in here since 85 at least. The last piece, there are six 9 16 bolts holding on the backing plate for the disc and the spindle itself. The spindle itself on a four wheel drive is a hollow unit. The actual shaft is actually just right inside of it. I doubt anybody who's watching this didn't know that. <laughs> but I think the more videos I make, the more you guys are going to find out that I am full of useless information. I'm full of a lot more than that too, but uh, I might cover that in a later video. Now to get the spindle off itself, you don't have to pull the backing plate off of the spindle. At least I don't think you do. But the way that I'm pulling it off of here, you'll, you'll see why I'm pulling the backing plate as I go. And not to mention, I think I'm going to clean them up with a brush and get a coat of paint on them. I really don't think the vacuum plate needs to have that close of tolerances, but they do. Alright, so for getting this off, I'm sure there's better ways, but I've got a small stainless steel punch that has a decent point, but it's a tapered point. Um, it's kind of contoured. This is all I did on the other side. It is Go around it kind of like I'm separating a bearing. And at a certain point, you'll start to get a break. This side is being a little bit more stubborn than the other side was. I think this hub's been pulled before. The other side, I think, did had been pulled before because it was much easier than this. Alrighty, well, I kind of lost the point. Alright, let's see if 
this one's any better. Yeah, it's coming. So boring as it may be, I guess it's a good example of uh, <laughs> you get to see everybody else struggles with their stuff on their projects too, right? Some things, not everything just goes easier. I do have a question though. I'm trying to figure out if there's any other Dana 44 applications. Well, here, I guess the real question is, will the carrier from our Dana 44 rear end fit in my front end? That's my question. Um, I was able to get a hold of a Dana manual online, a PDF manual on one of the forums that I'm on. Um, International Full Size Jeep Association. And it was a link to another forum, and I don't remember the forum. Dude. But I think it was, it, I know it was another Jeep forum. But I believe it was a CJ based Jeep forum. And anyhow, that link sent me to like a full listing of Dana Axle. It's like the Dana Axle Bible. And they had all kinds of different applications listed for the Dana 44, uh, really for all Dana's axles in that, in that resource. And I only browsed through it lightly. Um, I was checking my email while I was at work, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to check it out. Wow. And that's that. So, it <laughs> took long enough, but that's your actual spindle. And you can't really see, but that's just what slid on there. It's got both of your raised seats for your bearings. And it also mates up with the seal for the hub. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need to replace that. You probably can't see it from there, but there's um, cracking, fluting and cracking on this seal. Oh boy, and when I push it in, you can just see the, see the inside of it's separated away. But that's that. Um, from there, your your axle shaft is pretty much loose. Um, ball joint wise. So if you don't bearings, that's that's how far you're gonna have to go. Bearings and seals, that is. I guess if you're just doing bearings, you don't need to go that far. Um, you could leave that spindle on there for bearings if you're just going to clean everything up. But I wanted to do the seal as well. There's the cracking. You can see it's, I mean, that's that's just straight dry rot. Um, apparently this one has never been off because, boy, that was a pain to pull. And I think where I was having so much jam, 
is right inside that bolt there's a flange off the back of the spindle there you go that flange that sticks out a little bit presses right into that so that's where I was getting stuck up at um, the other side which I had done earlier I have already started to pull the ball joint I've got the lower nut off I'm running out of time tonight so I won't be able to get the top one off and start trying to press that out but all it was was an inch and an eighth open-ended wrench and I spun the knuckle a little bit in order to get my closed side of the wrench over that so I could get a good pull on it without worrying about slipping off and once it was broken I finagled that back out and use the open end to walk that bolt off. I don't know how it's supposed to be done, but that way works pretty well. <laughs> well, I'm that much closer to dropping that baby out of there and going to work on that. One thing I got a little bit worried about because I had just done a C-clip style rear end is looking at my pin right there I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but those teeth on the ring are in the way of that center pin. And on the C-clip rear end, that center pin has to come out to undo the C-clips. Not so on the front Dana 44. Because once you pulled the axles out of the carrier, that's, I mean, that's the whole purpose. Pulling the axles out is the whole purpose for that. So once the axles are out, the carrier will just drop right out a lot simpler. Retained by the knuckles. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in. Sorry for wasting your time taking so long on that, but hey, if that's what it takes, it's what it takes. Till next time, Sparklighter out.